is contraception ethical or is it immoral? Um, the idea is that if we can avoid unwanted pregnancies, how much better off would this world be? And that's the idea behind contraception. And that, in theory, is what makes sense to so many people. But yet, in practice, it doesn't work out that way. If we look at the history of contraception, and we can see it was deemed by the Christian community as immoral and unethical all the way up into the early 1900s, um, even in the U.S., it was illegal to promote and to advertise contraceptions. And the U.S. mail carriers were able to compensate it if they found any contraceptions being delivered through the mail. Um, up until 1918, it was Margaret Sanger who pushed the term birth control and tried regulating childbirth through contraception. And she was the founder of Planned Parenthood and the mother of modern day birth control, but also a believer in eugenics and a believer in a superior race and with the goal of trying to regulate childbirth, especially with minorities or the poor or people who she deemed unfit to raise the culture of our society. So she wanted to use birth control as a means of depressing certain minorities and elevating other classes. And she actually made a lot of progress from 1918 and up until she was 80 years old, she was still promoting this ideology and she um, helped fund the pill, the first pill, which was a ton of hormones being um, introduced into the woman to help her with her menstruation cycle and to avoid pregnancy and it was very unhealthy and it still is very unhealthy and I encourage everybody even though the pill is very accepted by our culture today I encourage you to research it and see what it's actually doing to your body and the unhealthy hormones and the side effects and all the different chemicals that are being put into your body and changing the cycle of the woman and how unhealthy and how dangerous that is. So while the Christian position in the early 1900s was that birth control and contraception was immoral and ethical, um, it actually changed. And this started in the 1930s with the Anglican Church, and they began, began to accept contraception in certain cases of marriage. But once they allowed that door to be open, um, all, a lot of other Christian denominations and Protestant denominations started following suit. <clears throat> and they also accepted the ideology of birth control. And up until today, where pretty much every Protestant Christian denomination accepts birth control within the context of marriage. Now what this does, allowing birth control um, in, in contraception, even into marriage, is it makes it seem morally permissible. And since the Christian church said it was morally permissible, it allowed our culture to get behind that. And every Christian denomination but the Catholic Church deems birth control and contraception morally permissible within marriage. Um, but the Catholic Church stands with the original teachings because if it is from God um, and morality is from God and God does not change, then morali morality should not be able to change as well. So the Catholic Church has always held the position that contraception is immoral and unethical even within the confines of marriage. The Catholic position is that sex is sacred and sex is so sacred it is meant for marriage because every intimate relational act within marriage we get to participate in the creative power of God. So sex is meant to be not only unitive and binding and bonding that couple together and participating in that sacrament of marriage and remembering that, but also open to life and procreative, open to the opportunity and availability of life and accepting that entire person and giving your entire self, not putting up barriers in between and not rejecting their fertility, but accepting the entire person. So sex is so very sacred and when we remove that sacredness and when we put up barriers in between and when we remove the option of procreation and take that out of the equation and divorce procreation from the sexual act then it really cheapens that sacrament and it, it, it really cheapens that act and it puts it similar on, on a level like um, a, a different or an, another natural desire like I'm hungry so I'm going to eat a cheeseburger right I want sex so I'm going to have it there are no consequences there are no responsibilities and it, you can see the effects of that mindset in the culture while we think that birth control and contraception is only going to produce wanted children and it's going to really help and elevate our culture and our society in theory that's what the mindset was and that is actually the mindset of our contracepting culture today but in practice the results 
are staggering. The results, what actually happened is something completely different. So since contraception was embraced by the Protestant community and accepted by the culture, we can see that there is 25 times more STDs from 1960 to 2000, the number of cohabitating couples have increased by 1,000%. There are more than three times more single mothers. Um, babies born out of wedlock went from 2% in 1960 to 40%. Married households went from 74% to 48% from 1960 to 2010. Unmarried cohabitating couples went from 1 million to 11 million from 1960 to 2000. And if you got married today, you are more than likely going to end in divorce than you're going to stay married until death do you part. Divorce is at about 50%. Abortion is another indirect fruit of the contracepting culture. And we can see today that there are 1.2 million innocent, defenseless babies being slaughtered through abortion each year. See, the misconception that contraception is going to stop abortion is actually false and we find that 54% of women having abortions use contraception during the month that they became pregnant and nearly all women who have had abortions have also used contraception. This is because that most don't use the contraceptive method of their choice either consistently or correctly. For example, they might be missing the pill. Um, or taking the injection late or breaking a condom, um, none are 100% effective. So since 1973, when the Supreme Court deemed abortion legal and acceptable across the country, the pro-life movement has been fighting to reverse that decision and change that. And in an attempt in 1992, they brought contraception to the court and trying to change the laws on that in order to um, reverse Roe versus Wade and to make abortion illegal. And so they, the pro-life movement thought they had a great chance at this, but this is what the court came back and said. They said in some critical respects, abortion is of the same character as the decision to use contraception. For two decades of economic and social developments, people have organized intimate relationships and made choices to define their views of themselves and their places in society in relation to the availability of abortion in the event that contraception should fail. Basically what the court is saying is that abortion is a necessary alternative or result from contraception. And the court was able to figure this out and this is actually what's been happening and this is why the contraceptive culture that we have embraced has also directly impacted abortion. Because if you have contraception and it fails, then the next step is to have an abortion. So we can see and we've discovered that since contraception was accepted by our culture and then promoted and endorsed by so many in our culture and we've become a contracepting society, uh, we can see the result, the fruits of the contracepting mindset in divorcing procreation and unity from sexuality has had drastic and huge impacts on our culture and our society, whether directly or indirectly. We can see the massive decline in sexual morality, just understanding what the moral ethics and values and, and what is right and what is wrong regarding sexuality. Um, basically, the only standard for sexual morality today is consent as if it's consensual, and other than that, anything else goes. Um, we can see the huge increase in divorce, single mothers, cohabitation, committed relationship, the pornography epidemic and how pornography now is so rampant and how it's a huge industry, a lot bigger than all of the professional sports combined. Pornography makes more money than them. Um, we can see um, that directly relates child sex trafficking um, and we can also see how contraception impacts abortion. And then with the divorce from the procreative act of sexuality, you know, so many of us just think sexuality is what we're attracted to or what our desires are. And from that, we can see this homosexual culture and subculture in our society. The legalization of gay marriage has become very 
popular and very accepted. Um, there's so much transgender confusion that goes along with this. There's su suicide, there's depression, there's sexual abuse. I mean, it goes on and on, but since the acceptance of contraceptive and birth control, we can see the decline in sexual morality and the culture that we live in that relates directly and indirectly to contraception. So while we think that contraception and birth control was going to change our culture for the better and make only wanted children, what it actually did was it changed our mindset towards sexuality and it's led to a lot more harm than good. And what am I proposing as a pro-life American? Am I necessarily saying that all contraception should be illegal? Not necessarily, but I do believe with all my heart that all contraceptive is immoral and unethical. And as Christians, as a Christian church and as a culture of life, we need to stand up against contraception and highlight the immorality of it in God's ideals and even though it's a high standard to live up to and it's very hard as a Christian we're meant to love and we're meant to challenge we're meant to call people forth to the ideal that God has created us to be